Hey, good morning to you. In case you just woke up, wow, you really wake up quite late. <laughs> it's, it's about 7.21 and you're watching hashtag GTV Breakfast. Let me give you a flavor of what is ahead. And talking of flavor, if you missed our recipe today, how palava sauce was wrapped up in savory pancake, making shake hungry here. And you can go to our Facebook page, look for GTV Ghana, follow it. Uh, like the video, share it. We're trying to get to a million view viewers, a uh, million followers, and uh, you, you are part of that story. So that recipe is there. We have an issue to discuss, the IMF bailout, and we're scooping the Minister of State at the Finance Ministry on the implications of that $600 million uh, first tranche of the $3 billion that we've applied for from the International Monetary Fund. That's a conversation to chew on and then breakfast with vanilla takes place in the last half hour of today so your messages as always grab your phone and put down our number 055-556-1034 if you're calling uh, sending us messages outside of ghana it's plus 233-55-556-1034 across social media just use the hashtag gtv breakfast and we'll locate your messages like god's grace locates us and read them to you. My guest at the table speaks for the national chief imam. His name is Sheikh Arimiyao Shaibu. Salaam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Shalom. And peace to you, Atakbir. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, indeed. <laughs> may God be magnified, yes. magnified, and yes. may God be praised. How are you? How is uh, the old man, the national chief um, imam? Old man is doing very well, um, high in his spirit. Uh, strong, str still strong in body. Um, just yesterday, the Canadian High Commissioner paid him a courtesy call, and it will it will amaze you the how he summarized his response to the multitude of questions that she threw at him because she wanted to understand how he offers his leadership. Uh, in the areas of interfaith dialogue, in the areas of promoting peace in the, in the country, in the areas of youth development and education, in the areas of his position on terrorism, and uh, currently what is happening, you know, the threat to the West African sub-region mm -hmm. respect to ter terrorism, and how he summarized all these things in uh, on the basis of certain quotations from the from the Holy Quran and what he thinks uh, we must do and, I, and it was for me it was very amazing and we around him had very little to add to what 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 he, he gave and so uh, he's still alert in the mind acute uh, he can think as long as you make him to understand the subject in the language that he best understands mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he's, he's able to yeah so so, so, so he's fine, and we are happy that he keeps on receiving, you know, such people mm -hmm. from both from internal and the diplomatic circles, uh, still pay him a courtesy call. And, and 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 for me, that international dimension of his uh, his role has been recognized. Uh, the British High Commissioner comes to recognize that. The U.S. Ambassador comes to recognize that. The Canadian Ambassador comes, and they all have done their search. And so when they come, they tell him what they have heard up or they know about him, and that's a credit. And and for me. Uh, it's not so much about him, but about the value of leadership. The value of leadership. When you are made a leader, what do you live for? Is it about for your own personal aggrandizement? Is it for your fame? Is it for your popularity? Is it about how you make positive impact and leave a good legacy? I think that for such people, him and other leaders within across the religious spectrum, and even within the political circles, when God elevates you, you see, leadership is an elevation by God in his favor. It's not because you are the most qualified the most knowledgeable, the wisest of all people. God decides at one time to elevate you for his own purpose. If you understand that, you will behave well. And I say so directly to politicians who, through our electoral process and by God's grace, 
because all of them when they are when they are campaigning they said nyamine sehene is god who installs <laughs> kings how, how did how did they come by, by this understanding mm. it is is god who enthrones mm. so when our politicians stand and when they meet religious people and they want to appeal to re religious emotion of the religious class for example they use expressions that resonates with the thinking of the people of the religious class and they say they tell us nyame ene sehene so unim say nyame ene sehene unim nyantia or power say wo be yehene have you thought deeply about about this and some of the things are tomorrow at the proper time we shall be talking as you listen to the elections that went on the fallout and hear what people are saying the mischief against them, them themselves from internal side, mm. some of them very difficult to forgive. Because you want to win election, you say things that are untrue. You damage his rep rep reputation. Because your end here uh, is to win. Now when you win, you finish, you begin to say, oh, you're in your back. Oh, you know, during the time we all said things, oh, so, so you knew you were being mischievous. For me, these things, they go very deep at the core of the quality of our politics. So if internally we can do this, so across the political divide, the worst we can do, because we must win the election. So I'm calling on all, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to see what the MPP will also do. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting. So that we can really make a universal comment about this that we should avoid the politics of mischief because you are competing with me don't be malicious go pick information that are untrue about me damage me and the government can say we're sorry and then when you have won the election on the basis of malice mischief defaming slander you have won the election on this evil vice then you come back so now you see let's now look at the party oh you see now we are one now, how do i trust you how do i trust you even if your own compatriot somebody with whom i share the same political platform how do i trust you how do my citizens trust you that if you're on base of lies you can do this to your co your, your co uh, political you know colleague so if citizens are really wise and they listen, if they listen, how should we trust you? If you become our president, how should we trust you? If you become our, our president, how should we trust you? So I'm talking to young politicians. I, you know, together with my colleague, my brother here, at this one, you cross it in age. Mm -hmm. I, I live on the reality that I'm getting old. I'm, I'm sliding back. Uh, a time will come when I will not be able to talk the way I'm doing and somebody must replace me. Now, even in politics, because politics has become a necessary evil, there's nothing we can do about it. We must always do elections. So please, in young politicians, I talk to you. Find your true path. Find your true path to politics of conscience that you can now use politics as a means by which you render quality and positive contribution all right to our development thank you so much opening remarks from sheikh arini yao shaibu a spokesperson for the national chief imam he's not here alone the man who is on the hashtag this nonsense must stop <laughs> uh, crusade is right here he's the president and the founder of the worldwide miracle outreach Reverend Dr. Lawrence Tete, what's your middle name? Nene Kofi Agbenyo Tete. Mm. Reverend Dr. Lawrence Nene Kofi Agbenyo Tete. Nene is royal. Yes. 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 Nene is like Nana. Nana. Mm. My great grandfather was the one who led the war, the Katamanto War, the Dangwe War. In fact, my great grandfather was the one who was the only person who could conquer the Ashantis mm. in the Dodua Forest. Mm. So he was the one who led to even capture some part of uh, Togoland for Ghana. And so I come directly 
from that lineage. In fact, by virtue of my name, my title, and where I come from, I'm qualified to be a king of the Dagbe State. Wow. Yes. Your Majesty, we greet you. But I, I prefer <laughs> to be a preacher. And this is one thing that the, the Dangwe Shire people would have really loved, that yeah. I take it. Yeah. Uh, the apathetic clan of the Dangwe, the, the uh, um, Wodukum clan of the Dangwe people, the uh, Shire, entire Shire community. But I chose to be. And also from my mother's side, I come from uh, both Osu and Asrain. So where the uh, garment you come from is where my mother, mother comes, comes from. from. And so both homes are come from the King family. But I, I love preaching the gospel. And I think in every community there must be the priest, the king, and the prophet. And I choose to be the priest. You are welcome, sir. Thank you. Good to have you here. Um, I know the, the, the 31 days of the nonsense must stop is going on. Very much so. Yeah, very much so. Every morning. What's on your mind this morning that you want us to touch on? Kafu, I've been very sad for the past four days. In fact, I celebrated my birthday on Monday. And thank you for all the best oh. wishes I had uh, from GTV and almost all the stations. <laughs> uh, 15th May is my birthday. Yes, so Monday. I thank you ahead, yes. all of you. Yeah. But I read an article from a professor, and I've sent it to you. Yes. If you can read that article, I would love it. Okay, so this is a... An a article, let me give a background. An article that tells us how much of devastation attack we are giving to our nation from Galamse. Okay. And I think we have handled the Galamse issue haphazardly. Mm. So Please this is a story, credit to myjoinline.com. So, um, children born in areas prone to illegal mining suffer cognitive impairment. It means their brain mm. function is not, not great. And other deformities due to the high use of heavy metals used in gold extraction by Galamse operators. So this is an observation of Paul, Professor Paul Poku Sampeni Osei. He's an associate professor, Department of Pathology, School of Medical Sciences at KNUST, and a consultant pathologist at the Confanochi Teaching Hospital. Quote, the first thing that affects these babies when they are infected by these toxins is cognitive impairment. Their mm -hmm. brains do not respond to these normal things that we see. So common metals used in the extraction of gold include mercury, cyanide, and lead and they are inhaled we are breathed in and ingested into the bloodstream of the miners and residents of the mining com communities now children and infants can absorb up to 50 percent of these heavy metals when they inhale these substances or eat food contaminated by these heavy metals adults have the capacity to absorb between 50 to 20 percent of the metals so they are gastrointestinal tract so they are organs inside their bodies in the stomachs has a high affinity it, it, it bonds with these metals and there are all kinds of changes that are happening to uh, these babies according to the professor there are instances in some areas of ghana where babies are born with their legs forming around their chest wow. so instead of having your legs where your legs are your legs are coming out mm -hmm. at your chest area Small formation. there's more um so legs are not only forming around the chest, they are forming around the neck. Mm. They are also forming around the stomach. Mm. In Ghana, he said, we have babies being born with one eye. Nkudike, one eye. Some of them without genitals. He says some mothers are even dying with their babies. I continue. The placenta of a pregnant woman has a high affinity for lead. So if such a woman lives in a Galamse area, her baby will certainly have deformities when born. See, the children are also suffering from kidney and hypertensive-related conditions. Just yesterday was World Hypertension Day. Yeah. And babies are actually suffering from hypertension, wow. high blood pressure as a result of, of all these things. So deformities, I mean, these are monstrosities. Con congenitally, I mean. Completely, so. from no fault of the baby. So, so Kafu... <coughs> When I sent you this, you notice I sent it to you at midnight. Yes. I couldn't sleep. Mm. I felt that I was a corporate to this. You know what? The professor who said all of this, mm. he's on the line right now. Okay. So let's have a chat Wonderful. with uh, the professor Wonderful. Um, um, who, who, who made these very startling revelations uh, that we just read out. Prof, good morning. Welcome to GTV Breakfast. Good morning, my brother. How are 
are you? It's I'm I'm great, but I'm sad. I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah. shocked by the the devastation that mining is causing to the next generation. Yes, yes, it is true that all of us are sad. I'm also sad as well. In fact, I believe that everybody in Ghana, probably except those who are benefiting directly from it, will be the only people who will not be that. How long have you uh, noticed these deformities in babies and the impacts on mothers as well? Well, um, uh, good morning once again to your church business and yourself. Um, this very thing that you are, I mean, it's been a while, but um, I was first introduced. I did a paper on the case report, and it was first reported by, uh, I think, DBC, which eventually interviewed me on this, then I think it got thrown up and then Ghanaian so to be after I've been in it for some time. For some time, yeah. Which areas of Ghana are we having uh, the, the, these horrible effects on babies? Like I said, I, I think what we call case studies. And it was only confined to three regions, but probably it could be more or if I had gone to do uh, let's say, a full blown uh, research. But this one I did it in three places. Um, or I happened to have three places in Ghana that have suffered some form of maternal uh, baby mortality. So I was called to come and just get the babies out of the mother's uh, system so that the babies could be buried separately. So it was carried out in the um, central region, western, and then uh, the central region. Give us uh, a, a summary of your findings. What did you find? What's the summary of your findings? Well, externally, externally I think and a lot of discussions have gone on. Yes, as far as my, my findings are concerned, but before me, all manner of congenital anomalies were, were, were found externally. And then internally, uh, you, you could see, uh, I could see that a, a child or a, a baby, a newborn kidney is nothing to write home about. I mean, uh, the kidney is highly well bloated, that is very enlarged kidney, which so that the child was actually going through what you call citric, uh, what do you call it, necrotic uh, sort of uh, condition. Because the kidney shouldn't be that big in the child. In some instances, too, if it's just a, a baby, maybe made up, let's say, it's about 15 years, their kidneys are also enlarged. And then, um, if not enlarged, sometimes you see their kidneys uh, shrinking and it appears a uh, scar, meaning that the person has been having some form of uh, renal-related condition that could lead to hypertension. They understand? So mm -hmm. these are some of the things that... And aside that, aside that you can also see the brain, no words were formed, more formed brain, and then uh, you get to the, what do you call it, the heart and so and so forth. So basically that is what has happened during my, my case study that I did in some, some years ago, what of course now I'm, I'm doing some form of what we call for proper research into it by looking into a placenta, which happens to be one of the main uh, sources of from which these children or these babies get uh, what we call get, as, as it were, these uh, heavy metals used in extraction of gold. Prof, some of the descriptions I read in the Nigerian Online report I, I, I come straight out of a horror movie. So you have you have necks sprouting from uh, legs sprouting from necks and stomachs. I mean, wh wh what's all that? Oh yeah, my brother. It's actually, when I was in medical school somewhere outside of Ghana, as a young boy, I I, I was reading some of these things, congenital anomalies, and it was as if they were way far 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 from us. Basically, most of them were were seen among animals and just animals were commonly affected by some of these things because animals graze and drink diet from these things uh, wow. <coughs> these sources so you could see them among animals and then some few 
uh, humans in, in maybe um, yes, India and so and so forth. But when I saw it already dawn on me and I saw it in Ghana, then I said, wow, then we are in trouble. Especially when the repeater says that these heavy metals, especially lead, mercury, cadmium, cyanide, what is commonly used in Ghana for the extraction of gold, then we are in trouble, my brother. What are your recommendations as an academic and a researcher? Well, first recommendation is that, uh, I mean, we so the, the leaders, in fact, any time I see leaders, I'm not talking about it. I'm not looking at the government. I'm not looking at the minister. Yes. I'm looking at me and you. We mm -hmm. are all leaders yes, in our own small Exactly. Because yes. the moment we see it and bring it forth to the, uh, to the knowledge of the, of the public, so we are taking leadership role. So first, I want really leaders to we should be very much concerned about it in terms of um, our coming out with our findings and coming out vocally to talk about it. That is one. And two, um, uh, of course, the leaders, we have hierarchy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So there are people who are higher in terms of the leadership hierarchy who feel to them that they not good laws and significant laws for that matter that those who who are responsible to sell all these things into our water bodies, which eventually find themselves into our food chain, and then eventually to humans, must be, must be brought to book and, and negative action is taken against them. And there should be some means by which we will recover all these things, which of course is going to be a very long way to go, but to recover the water body, to recover our, our soil, and all those things, is not going to be easy. In fact, seriously speaking, uh, honestly, um, there should be a holistic approach to this. Everybody must be on board to be able to clear uh, the minutes. Aside the fact that everything is being destroyed, the human component of it is, is, is serious and quite, I mean, alarming and quite unpleasant. And so the earlier we, we, we deal with it, the better it will be for us. Before I let you go, it was Reverend Dr. Lawrence Tete who alerted me to this story. I believe he has maybe a, a question or two to you um, concerning you, the findings from your research. Reverend Dr. Tete, Professor uh, Osai, is, is, is on the line. Let me congratulate my brother. I'm okay, okay. I think that if all of us will be responsible like you've been, this nonsense will stop. Oh, that's it. That's I, I believe we've all been cooperating. I read your article at midnight in my, during my study time, and I couldn't wait but to send it to Kafui that this is what is happening. In Ghana yeah. here, we have the presidency, we have the judiciary, we have the parliamentary, we have the so-called pressmen who claim that we are the fourth realm of the estate. We also have clergymen. We have police people today in Ghana that are wasting energies. Are you, at one place, you see about 10 policemen on motorbike. What are they doing here? They should go to the basis. We should not impress people here. But then the sad thing is that before I even come to a uh, prof, in every district there's a head of national security, there's a head of BNI, there's a head of police, there's a head of uh, 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 district um, security. security system. What are we doing? I want to say thank you, but please continue with what you are doing. I want you to know that the international community will hear of you. Some of us will make sure, even places that they've not heard of this thing, they should hear of it. Because we are killing our own people. We've destroyed our own community. There are a lot of professors like him who knows exactly what is going on, who are quiet because they are beneficiary. There are a lot of police people who know exactly what is happening in this nation, who are quiet because they are beneficiary. Tell me, if we don't have police commissioners in the area, can you go into any land in Ghana today and start digging a place from somebody's cocoa farm or somebody's plantain farm and a king or a policeman will not arrest you. So if we say we are not aware of this thing, it's not. So please let me commend you. Instead of asking questions, I want to speak to you privately after this program and also commend you. But there are a few comments I want to make. If Sheikh finish, I'll make those comments. Uh, thank you so much. Prof, please stay on the line. I think uh, Sheikh um, Arimi Ashaivo has uh, a few comments to make. Oh yeah, I just want to associate myself with the commendations okay. of my, my colleague here. But probably... What I would I would want you to go ahead and do because um, Ghanaians, the way we are, um, we are lethargic when it comes to our response to some of these matters because we see ourselves far removed from the risk and 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 the and the dangers. Can you find a space where you can organize some public lecture where policy people 
um, with some PowerPoints where you give us the pictures. These pictures, these <laughs> horrible, horrible pictures, especially young people who are now seeking to give birth to children mm -hmm. uh, to perpetuate, you know, the human species. And what becomes of a nation if a certain generation is endangered to, to this extent? So in Ghana, for example, if the next generation are uh, exposed to such a risk, so what, what, what becomes of our, of, our, of our country? And I think, and secondly, probably apart from that, probably in a studio like this, you know, to really, really paint the picture yes. uh, very well, you know, uh, to us. Make him our guest on Thursday. We are happy to sandwich him. Yes, yes. <laughs> if he has to even take over. Over. We are happy to sandwich him. We have a big national conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's not just yeah, yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, is, it is sad. It is sad when we're talking about this. And uh, those in policy, pardon me if I, ha if I have to speak the way I'm, I'm doing, that this important matter that we are dealing with, we reduced it to personal attacks. Mm. Yeah. I, I got sad mm. that matters of such important importance yeah. that when it has come to public domain, instead of us to quickly go back quickly, use wisdom to see how in government we will be able to tackle this matter, mm. where we fell short and where we have been successful, analyze it very well and see. The whole thing was, you see, the importance was removed. And then it is now the political side of it and certain personality yeah. that, that we we're, were dealing with. Secondly, I want to reiterate, when the Fulanese are entering into our lands, the chiefs and the local communities yeah. came out publicly. Yeah. They protested. Why are, not, are they not doing so for our galamsey? Look at the, the dangers we are all we are exposed to. Yeah, so it's great that Prof has come up with uh, the research. He is now re-energizing and re-enacting the importance oh, of the oh. whole matter. Yeah. So within the political sector, within the health sector, within the traditional authority, within our security, within the police, like the Reverend has said, look, let's all come back and tackle this in, as, a, as a national threat to, to, our, to, to our security. I think I associate with both of you yes. your comments. No. Uh, Professor Say, I want to let him go. You had any comments for him briefly? I want to... I want to know, first of all, can we find the research anywhere on Google Scholar? Is there anywhere where it's been published for us to go read and then digest yes, and translate? Yes, yes. Um, I would, uh, if I, when I speak with you, yes, sir. as you speak now, I'm dropping off my kids at school. Okay. When I'm done, I will surely I mean, give you the, the link. The link and yeah, I, yes, so that we can translate it into different languages and let people know the extent of the... If it's, it's a possibility of adult education in the various languages, mm -hmm. it must be done so we will know exactly. Do we have pictures? We do? Okay. Prof. Hello. Do we have pictures of all these the congenital deformities? Come on again. Do you have pictures of all these necks sprouting out, uh, legs sprouting out of stomachs and necks? Do you have pictures? We need to shock people out of their lethargy, you know? We know something. There's excess tissue here. Mm -hmm. uh, especially when they are paid to report. Yeah. And uh, what do we call it? So the pictures. I said that if they are saying sometimes mm -hmm. they may you have to block the eyes and things like that. Yeah. Out of yeah, mm -hmm. out of mm -hmm. out of way. So I'm um, probably one on one I can show, but sure, sure. Uh, to do them mm -hmm. on uh, in the media for the parading somewhere mm -hmm. is quite. Not a problem. The information has to come out so that people are energized and they know that this is a serious fight. But we want to really thank you for the research that you've done on this, and we'll be getting in touch with you later on. Most grateful. Thank and you. Con you Congratulations for being a good father. I can hear you say you are taking your chin. That is a responsible father. <laughs> Thank That's you so much. Responsible. Professor On Paul. Yes. We have to bring this story. Yes, yes. yes. We, we have to congratulate you for yeah, yeah. this. Professor Paul, Paul Poku, something else. The tree, yeah. huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, say, I'm saying, you know, huh? Mm -hmm. The danger I am saying, huh? Oh, Baba, Nini, I am back home. Nini, Nini. Oh, Nini, Pan, Nini, I am back home. Is he mm -hmm. And I'm say poison never fit. Sagal him say it don't And mammy for no a de ne echo a wood yen mwa and them santino a say a kola no ye wodu no. Ube wa kola ni nai e wuni fu. Ube wa kola ni nai e pio e wono kon. Na e banisa na wusi we we dia e demon. Exactly. You took you forgot about the genitals. Now what do you call soft in chain? Say, what, what, 
ça faut dire on dit minimum non bon pas même yeah. oh bah on va pas mon pas ou non c'est ça quoi on va casser une côte bon on croise un sable quoi non une côte mais pour votre ami pourquoi pas dire ça des facts on sait il n'y a ni pas, il y a aussi un soumis à dire, il y a un soumis à dire. Oui, il y a un soumis à dire. Il y a un soumis à dire. C'est pourquoi, il y a un soumis à dire, 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 il y a un Nenai es nenai no ebe pe pie e wano kong ana ebe bo ni ni fru na uhu a wu banu hospital ni ekse ba ya wu jani ya ebe so umu se jina na fe wu unya wa ya no no so this matter is a serious matter Sheik we need your adult education in fee I'm telling you yes 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 you take the message down yes seriously we need you there because if you don't break it down to this this level. They yes. think we are far away from yeah, the dead. Producer Cynthia will take note. Yes. You know, shake his arm. Uh, we, yes. we, we really, really, really. Yes. Please, let's remove the politics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This please, is, this please, is please, life. Please, this is please, life. please, please, please. Yeah. Let's remove this yeah, politics. Yeah, yeah. Let's look. Once it comes to these matters, let's come together. Let's come together. Let us not come together only behind the scenes when we are sharing the booty. Mm -hmm. The they are telling us now oh, yes. that oh, you see, when you see us fighting, don't. We we behind friends. the scenes, we are friends. Please, let's show this friendship on such serious matters. Mm. Let me see NDC, MPP, removing the, the, the malice and the mischief between the, that political sharp divide. And let's unite again. And let's unite and say, look, when you queen are there. And is this so? When you queen are there, this is what they are drinking. Uh-huh. In sure when they are no. Uh-huh. In sure when they are there, no. Uh-huh. Now, <laughs> but, and, none, and none of them had legs coming out of their stomach. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to think it about it your children. Me ne na, me ne na no Even in your old age. Yeah. It's so your cast ready and now so no. Say ya pesa ya can ya serious no no. Because if you move your words, you can't say that any more tears here. No more, no more attention. Say, ah, say, oh, how be a day anymore? I was say you can't hear. One time. Thank you so much. I really want to thank you, and Sheikh. Please thank Reverend for bringing this story. Oh, thank you so much. And my producers also for acting on it quickly to bring the professor who reported this. This is great. I'm so impressed with the way they swiftly got the professor. But it was at midnight I read it. And Kafui, let's get back to it. What? Sheikh did now is what we need as a nation. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this because Sheikh Aramea is here. Mm -hmm. We've spoken jargons too much. Yeah. Bring it down. When it comes to Galamse, we are speaking big languages mm -hmm. where even the geologist doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. And then the people who write the scripts for the president or the vice president or the minister to read it, big, big English to prove a point to them. They themselves make pronunciations they don't understand. <laughs> Let's come to the ground what i'm saying simply is that the police in ghana cannot tell me they don't know where the galamse perpetrators are i want to zero into the police mm. this whole exuberance we are doing we are doing too many meetings in accra let's go to the hinterland where the problem is and let us not there must not be selective justice there are a lot of things i'm seeing now that in the coming days we'll be talking about Sometimes they say when you say you be victimized, how much, how many times? As this day, I'm an old man. I mean, there's no. If I'd gone to the police, I would have been a pensioner by now. I would have handed over my glove, maybe be an IGP or commissioner of police somewhere, and I would have been finished. You don't look sixty. Unfortunately. Such a handsome man. Yeah, he doesn't look sixty. You know, I used to like it when I'm old. Eh? Now I'm getting older. I don't like it. I used to wait when I'm going to seventy, when I'm going to sixty-five, when I'm going to now. I'm getting close. <laughs> you know, put the like comment there. <laughs> some time ago, when I, I noticed I was, I was I was growing, then the gray hair began coming from my nose. Yes. <laughs> so, so anytime I stand in the mirror, when I see it, I will use my hand. And you can remove it. <laughs> Shake it. You think you're the only one? <laughs> yeah, uh, we all do it. I look at my mustache and I see the white beard, and then I go to the barber and you know, just just snip the white off, keep the black. Well, you are unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's so, not you alone. Yes. <laughs> so, so we need to be very, very circumspect. Yeah. And I agree with Sheikh. We micromanage this nation. Mm. And we micromanage our offices. And we become very petty. You see what I'm saying now? Some policeman, commander, somebody, some other thing, or is speaking on the police. But the work of the police is to keep law and order, not to victimize people. Yeah. Not get innocent people that because they are not in your party or they are not in the good party books, you have to deprive them of certain things that you think will not make any difference. Mm. We have a lot of police in Ghana to go to the police. I'm zero in the police. Yes. Now let me give you an example. I'm not teaching the police what to do, mm -hmm. but go to uh, Airwalk Stadium. There are about eight, nine police people on motorbikes. And the traffic lights. They're on their mobile phones, <laughs> doing absolutely nothing. We drive in town. Mm. We see them. Three days today, I saw a group of them around Achimota. They are stopping cars to check weapons. Fine, that is good. But about 20 police checking cars. When we need to deploy them to certain places, and then you go to one house, you see about six, seven police because the man is wealthy. So he can get motorcade. He can get this. He can get that. It's, nobody's envious of those things. But let us do the right thing so we don't abuse the policing. And whether we like it or not, posterity will judge all of us. Exactly. There's no position anybody is holding now that is permanent. Mm -hmm. We should use our power, our position, our intellect, and the privileges God has given us now to win friends and to make friends and to serve among Ghana. Otherwise, along the line, Kafui, let me say this again. We all have family members around the brain area. We all have family members around poor areas. We all have family members around some tree areas. We all have family members around Ankoba areas. We all have people, and those of us who have traveled around the region, knows that this thing can be stopped. The machines that are being used for the Galam saying, shake and carefully, they didn't fly through the air. They're huge. So immigration officers are aware. National security cannot tell me they are not aware. In every community, when I was going to do a pro have a program in Kofodia, I needed permit from national security coordinator there in the district. I needed permission from the uh, VNI man. I needed permission from the police there. So if we needed all those permits at that time or that confirmation from them before we can do a program in just Kofodia here at the corner here, why do you tell me you don't know what is happening there? Somebody is responsible. Or somebody is enjoying the booty complicit. at the expense of all of us in this nonsense must stop, stop. Mm -hmm. yeah legs coming out of stomachs and necks mm -hmm. and chests mm -hmm. it's crazy one-eyed you know cyclops there, there was a mythical creature called the cyclops mm -hmm. in i think greek or roman mythology mm -hmm. with a one eye in mm -hmm. his forehead mm -hmm. so we are breeding cyclopses now I mean, come on, man. And it will come to hunt all of us. Of course. Because whether we like it or not, if we think it doesn't affect us, let me give you this before you read your strength. The things that will be happening to them in Oboise, in Takwa, in Achiansi, on those places, when the hospitals are not able to take care of them, they will come to Rich Hospital, they will come to Kalebu, they will Kofanoche. come to University of Ghana, they will come to Kofanoche. So we will go to hospitals and our children will not have bed. And so this thing is something that we must look at holistically. Mm. And please, any comment I've made here, don't be petty about it. Mm. In any case, I have no regret in anything I've said. <laughs> the nonsense must, must stop. stop. <laughs> Thank you so much. And the messages must continue. 055 556 1034. Brother Kafui says Kojo Selassie. The solution to this crime is there's nothing legal or illegal about the government must stop or withdraw all licenses. People must be stopped from boasting about the cash they make. The Chinese don't do this in China. Why here in Ghana? Somebody was on Metro TV displaying gold bars from his mining concessions and money he made in a month. Kuju Selassie Takradi. We're talking issues uh, on our big issue that we spoke about today. So I'm reading only those messages. My regards to these fine, two fine gentlemen, Sheikh. Uh, and Reverend, as we speak, Galam say is ongoing, destroying the forests and the water bodies. I'm appealing to the clergy to put pressure on the government to take pragmatic action now to stop the destruction of the environment, or else there will be no Ghana tomorrow. Hmm. Sami, uh, still talking about things that we are not talking about. We are reading only messages on issues that we are talking about. Alaji Hamsa is talking about uh, an expunge MP. We'll get there. Today we're only talking about the issues that we've had to deal with right now, we'll get to all the issues you're, you're, you're talking about. 
please, will Ghana ever work? That's a big question. It can mm. work mm. if those who have to do the work will do the work. Uh, happy birthday to you, Eric Arthur uh, from Lord Seco. So there's a couple of messages that we have. Uh, let's see. Good morning, Calf and the panelists, Sheikh and Reverend. Uh, Reverend has said it all. This nonsense must stop <laughs> in Reverend's voice. <laughs> yes, we like it. Good morning, Calf. Um, okay, so you're talking about how in America the Democrats and the Republicans have their differences regarding gun rights, gay rights, abortion rights, and others. But when it comes to development and the U.S. position in the world, they have one agenda, America first. Over here in Ghana, our politicians' agenda is in their pockets and stomach first. Shame on all of them. Shame. Alaji Dawuda uh, is asking a question to the chief imam's rep on bad political language. As a member of the Peace Council, will you rewrite the political party's code of conduct from Alaji Dawood and Madina Estate? We'll come okay. there pretty soon. Kweku Roberts, uh, in fact, this nonsense must stop. Kafui, I'm really sad and short of words. God save our country, Kweku Roberts Jr. in Awudume Estate. So these are your messages coming in on 055 Five five six ten thirty four. You realize that my pace is very calm and measured, because uh, one of my good friends, one of the allergies, sent me a very passionate uh, WhatsApp. He says I read the messages too fast, <laughs> so I should slow down and read the messages. I said, Alaji, I agree. Please forgive me. Say you are already forgiven. <laughs> so <laughs> Alaji has forgiven me, and my messages are coming at the pace that everybody can enjoy. When there are more, I will read them. Let's just flip through the headlines before we run out of here. Daily graphic, IMF approves Ghana's bailout. First, a big headline there. High Court unveils Anas for Nyan Techi. So now he will have to show his face to the man in court. So the Anas is going to testify in open court. And the president is not against small-scale mining, says uh, Minister Jinapo. Um, Jechi Kwesun is no more MP, Supreme Court orders. And the Asin North seat is now vacant, which means there's probably going to be a by-election of some Can sort. Can I make a comment on that, so which we okay. finish? Okay, yes, yes. Let me just run through and then I'll make you get your comment. Ghanaian Times. At last, Ghana gets $3 billion IMF loan, $600 million to be released immediately. I wonder what the alert for a, a transfer like that will sound on your phone. You know, because when I was, I was small, small money is coming, yeah, peep, peep. <laughs> with the $600 million, it's just like an explosion. Your phone, boom. your phone self go blow up. <laughs> boom. <laughs> land, you boom, like that. So $600 million of landing. <laughs> oh, two, four launches, 2023, green, Ghana, the day. Calls on all to support the project. Maybe that's why I'm wearing green, eh, for the green Ghana. Mm -hmm. Electricity tariff goes up by, all, by over 18%. PRC increase to take effect on the first day of June. So you still have um, some 13 days to enjoy the tariff at the old price. As in North MP court case, Supreme Court orders Parliament to expunge Jechi Kwesi's name from records. 559 road accident victims died in three hospitals in Accra, according to a study. Now, the business, business analyst says, will reduce fares if prices of spare parts go down. Transport operators. And Galam say, I am not happy with my chiefs at Amansia Asantehene fumes. And then Guta, which is the Ghana Union of Traders Association, says, it is too early to talk about price reduction due to CD gains. These are the headlines. We have about 15 minutes to go. Reverend, you wanted to say something on one of the stories. You know, Kafui, we have a serious problem with 1992 constitution. Mm -hmm. And I think it is taking us too long to review the Constitution. Not long ago, His Excellency President Nana Dodanko Akufado gave one of the most powerful things that I really enjoyed, the return of the... Uh, yeah, how do they call them? Uh, the I mean, Rupa? No, no, slave, the return yeah. of... I uh, returned home, the, the, yeah, the, 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 uh, our brothers who were... My sister, uh, I didn't yeah. that song. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Sometimes the return, return, the return, 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 return. Year of return. Year of return. Year of return. 2019. Where we had black men mm -hmm. who, for want of a better word, went as slaves, their great grandfathers, mm -hmm. coming back home. Mm -hmm. I sit here and I believe that some of this expansion we are doing to 
JC, mm -hmm. um, uh, Quincy, some of us will easily be victims to it. We went to study abroad. By the end of the long stay, we ended up getting resident permit mm -hmm. and for some of us, maybe citizenship. We want to come back home to bring our expertise. There's so much we've gained, knowledge we've gained. Some of them was, some of us went on scholarships. And government spent hard won currencies durable. to support a durable <laughs> as a I remember I would say I'll quote. <laughs> hard durable dollars. And then we come back home. And we know, we all know the privileges that you get when you hold other passports, whether we like it or not. We cannot fool ourselves. If you have a British passport, an American passport, there are a lot of privileges that you get. You go there, mm -hmm. your treatment and everything is done. Our children were born there, we got married there. We come back home, we want to serve our nation. And we say because you have another citizenship, you are not qualified to serve. When we know that some of us were born in this country and we were groomed, and the truth is that we come with diversified knowledge to be able to contribute. I think this is also one of the nonsenses that must stop. Mm -hmm. Because what is that is that what we are doing to uh, JC Kwesi now is not just to embarrass him in the name of politics. I don't give a hoot whether it's NEC or MPP. Trust me, some of us, we've risen past that issue of the box they put this on. And we sit here every day, and some people refer to us either NEC or MPP, depending on which line of the conversation we go to. But I'm, I'm, I'm not ready to prove that to anybody anymore. There's no necessary. But we should be able to get to that place where we see the need and the usefulness of people. Did he win an election? Did the vi uh, people vote for him? Did the people want him? If he was the one the people wanted, why are we using politics to take him out? The, so law, the law says he wasn't qualified. Yeah, that's so these are some of the things we should check well. Mm. Do we accept dual nationality? If we do, that's right. So it's a law. We need to go back to the Change constitution. The mm. Myself and Sheikh, not long ago, were invited to uh, IAE and mm. we addressed the, mm. them. And these are some of the points we spoke about. That there are a lot of things that must be changed. If they are not changed, some quality people that we think we need, we'll be losing them. IMF has brought us three billion. Yeah. Do you know that some of the people that will be brought to this country to come and check us are people that we know better than, mm -hmm. people that are, are more qualified than, but they'll be handled at expatriates and they'll be handling this. So we should get to that place where we revive, we revamp, and then we change certain things so that people who belong to this indigenous community who are happy to come back home are not victims. I see this of course, the Supreme Court has decided because they are basing it on the Constitution. But I see it as a clear violation mm. of somebody's right, human right, for even the community he's supposed to be serving. And what happens is that next time somebody has that interest again, he'll stay where he is. Mm. He'll stay in Canada, he'll stay in America, and it becomes brain drain. We should not use politics to deprive people who are happy to serve their nation. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Sir and Sheikh. this is devoid of NDC MP. <laughs> no, you see, in political contestation, once this law plays to the advantage of one, mm -hmm. it takes advantage of it. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. And that's why I'm saying that uh, the kind of politics of mischief that we do to our own self. So you take advantage of a certain other lacuna mm -hmm. or a certain law that maybe has a certain challenge or ambiguity or whatever, you take advantage of it against, you know, I mean, you know, th this one is, 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 this case is not unexampled. We have had several, several cases of, of, of this nature. Mm. It is now that it has come. So this one is appearing as if it's a new case. Uh, we should go back into the mind of those, the framers for our constitution. When they made this law, they made this provision in our constitution, thinking deep about it, why, why did they come up with this? Were they wrong? Were there certain justifications f for these? Some of them are still alive. We should be talking to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, is, it, it is important. Mm. Come to in, in, in our tradition, for example, because there's issue of divided loyalty. You want to be sure. For example, if you're a guy, you're an Ashanti, you're going to fight with another group somewhere, and you have secrets. Mm -hmm. huh? And you have somebody who you look at him and say, ah, so when we are dealing with the secret, mm -hmm. we say, can you go out? <laughs> can you go out? Because what we are discussing, we are not sure. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. you, you see? Mm -hmm. so, so even traditionally speaking, 
there could be some reason why. So we should really go into the thought. And when we have all come to agree that, look, the risks involved are such that we can deal with them. We, we can deal with them. But I mean, what I don't like is the mischief. That you keep quiet until it comes, it's placed to your advantage. Then you take advantage of it. Secondly, what are the qualifications for you to qualify as an MP in our country? And those to search for those qualifications, where do we begin from? Issues of citizenship. Do we proceed from somebody must go into the constitution? Should we start from the political party itself? That we are going to, you, you are going to put in place a candidate. Then that can, candidate comes with a certain expertise. You want him to be, to be your, your MP. Mm -hmm. But that he has questionable, certain, some questions about his citizenship. Mm -hmm. Are you interested to make sure that, look, can you do something about his citizenship be, be, before you come? That's from the political party level. Now jump to, to the EC. What are the requirements? Mm -hmm. So could the EC also have said, look, my friend, you, it appears I, according to our constitution, mm -hmm. you can't. Mm -hmm. Raise it up and let's see whether the political party will also fight against it. Take it to court even at that, at that level. My worry is when the person has been allowed, spent energy, all those things, he's been elected. Now, over how many years before now this, this rule is coming? Six years. Uh, Six years. He stayed for all this time. He's doing his, his work. And then by the stroke of a verdict at the court. Expunge the name. Yeah, I mean, you come with, I mean, uh, with the fiat, mm -hmm. expunge it. Mm -hmm. uh, he is somebody of a doubtful citizenship. Mm. We cannot trust his loyalty, so he should, he should not. You see, so the time lapse alone, it appears we are a nation, not a nation. So, and you know, they, they've said it, <laughs> justice denied, mm. eh, justice delayed, delayed, delayed justice, justice denied. denied. Mm -hmm. So these are maxims that must underpin and guide the way we even respond legally to issues when, when they, they come to us. Mm. But when we delay... Selective justice. You know, when we delay to, the, to, to, to this point, um, I, I, one, of, one, of the, one of the MPs, which is a good friend of mine, that suffered from this. And I remember very well. And look, from this, he died. The stress, the embarrassment, he became sick, he got hypertension, he got heart problem. Oh. Second day, he died. He died. I saw the man, the man deteriorating. I mean, we met him, somebody looks some handsome. After some time, he became so sluggish when you, are, when you see him talk, even he's talking. And gradually, 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 he got, until he was even granted amnesty by the former president, John mm. Draman Mahama, and not too long after that, he died. You see, so um, as a nation, we must act at appropriate time so that we don't when it our footballers have double uh, 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 nationality, we make them play for Ghana. <laughs> huh? Our footballers. So the this footballers, should, eh? should not be selective justice. Yeah. Yeah. Our footballers come to play with double uh, 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 We must also now come out clear. Mm -hmm. Even when you come, assuming we want to maintain this law, what is the line that you cannot cross? Can you become our president? Or you can remain as an MP? Or you can take any other position mm -hmm. apart from being this that or, level. or that lots this, of questions all these things must must be made clear. lots of questions but for me double loyalty is something we must think seriously about. about yeah zero five 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 six ten thirty four five minutes to go let's read your messages i'm going to slow down again please this dual citizen problem who created this in our constitution for for us one may ask <laughs> you see the Akans have a famous saying which translates that if the hunter knew that they would give him part of the meat he would have rested it well <laughs> yes. which group of the people wrote the constitution thanks K. Mensa. Good morning. So, is this where Ghana has gotten to? Hmm, says Stephen. Alaji Dawuda. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Tete, does your 30 days program ongoing, it's 31 days, have a day talk with political parties? Says uh, that the, the nonsense must stop. It's open to It's open day. to all. <laughs> all right. Well, I told you last time that we had a, a gentleman came who is a, a Muslim who came to give us some quotation. <laughs> <laughs> because I was so impressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? <laughs> Good morning, Calf and my men of God. I believe our military men are capable of helping to stop Galamse. It needs a more radical approach. Believe me, have a beautiful day. Nana in Klagong. Gideon Afadi. Good morning, Calf. Please kindly ask Sheikh to translate. Uh, uh, to God for us, this nonsense must stop. Shake, shake, shake speaks Hausa, shake speaks Chi, speaks, shake speaks Fanti, shake speaks English, shake does not speak Ghan. 
if I, if I, if I, if I, the only guy I can speak is Ona Bolicho. Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> This the, the question, the, the, the question yeah. is what I'm saying. I that joke was yeah. You got the kind of translation. Patrick says, "What is the chief's imam's position on LGBTQ?" Oh, people ask questions. People this thing, ask you know. have said it several, several times. Leave that one for me. We and are they're, totally they're against it. <laughs> Chief Imam is very explicit in his position about this. Mm -hmm. Totally against LGBTQ. <laughs> And what it means, like I've said several, several here, mm -hmm. this concept about our sexuality is a threat and a danger to the survival of the family. Mm -hmm. It's not a human right issue, mm -hmm. but the threat is to the family. And the family is the basic unit of society. You want to destroy a community, any, begin with the family and you succeed. It's clever. I like the way Sheikh is talking about Galamse. Me too. <laughs> Congratulations to the eminent men of God. They have done justice to the subject. My problem is that the man has lost his Canadian citizenship too. <laughs> Great injustice to him and his constituents. So what yes. does that mean? Is he is a man in, in no man's land? Yes, yes, yes. No, 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 no. He's a Ghanaian now. Yeah, yes. Mm. But he's lost mm. the Canadian one. Yes, not a Canadian. Can he reapply? So it's, it's, it will be difficult for him now. He, will have, he might have a stay. In, the, in Great Britain, you can decide to lose your British citizenship and still maintain your permanent residency. Mm -hmm. But in some countries, like... Um, Holland, mm -hmm. you can only have one citizenship. So if you deny yourself that one, reapplying can become hard. So it depends. Yes. We have people who were born in other countries becoming members of Congress in the United States. And that we don't know anything, we say what? Let's get serious. All I see, uh, uh, you want to comment the police on their motorbike uh, issues. Okay. All right. If you doubt the arrest, they'll play the CCTV camera for you to see it for yourself. Okay, police. Reverend's point is that they need to go and be tackling Galam yes. not congregating at traffic lights. In Accra. Uh, <laughs> hi, I am I'm David. And what I'm saying is that Ghana doesn't need politics, but kingship. Yo. Good discussion. It gives us a, a sign there. Good morning. It's so disturbing when you see how the prayer has turned. <laughs> this is the prayer from last year, from this year. That's the prayer. Looking like Lamujin. Looking like Lamujin. Dr. Tete, please keep on speaking the mind of God with boldness. This nonsense must stop. We are really enjoying the conversation, especially the way they are speaking with boldness. Boldness is a very attractive quality because not a lot of people are bold. So when they see somebody who is bold, they want to be like that person. Well, but sometimes too, yes. you end up getting victimized. Yeah, yeah. That's the mind. price of and boldness. people become very petty. Yes. Yeah. You not... You, if yeah, I yeah. should open up to yeah. certain things that have been said or things that have been done to some oh, of yeah. us because of this bullying, yeah, the shock yeah, yeah, exactly. is so petty. Yeah, we suffer the other side of it. That <laughs> people you expect to even protect you today don't want they any don't protection you. because Just you are scared. speaking your mind. But the nonsense must stop anyway. Amen. God takes care of us. Thank you so much, Atak Berry. Allah Akbar. Shalom to you. <laughs> Shalom. You must join your family. But the question is, must stop. The question is, but this one must stop. You must see a number of things. This show has nothing to do with nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> but the nonsense must, must stop. stop. And Good sense coming up. <laughs> every, every morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., we, we are Christian Village, yes. and it's, it's, it's going very well. All right. I did it before coming. Yes, mm. the nonsense is stopping. Yes. Uh, and the money is coming. <laughs> $600 has a million dollars has arrived, uh, which is the way. Big alert. Mm. We'll have a conversation about that IMF money. And then we have breakfast with vanilla as well. This is GTV Breakfast with my proud babies. Deformed water. This is what it looks like. But that is deformed. Nonsense must stop. Galamse.